Chapter 17. The cars of the migrant people crawled out of the side roads onto the great cross-country highway, and they took the migrant way to the west. In the daylight, they scuttled like bugs to the westward, and as the dark caught them, they clustered like bugs near to shelter and to water. And because they were so lonely and perplexed, because they had all come from a place of sadness and worry and defeat, and because they were all going to a new mysterious place, they huddled together, they talked together, they shared their lives, their food, and the things that they hoped for in the new country. Thus, it might be that one family camped near a spring, and another camped for the spring, and for company, and a third because the two families had pioneered the place and found it good. And when the sun went down, perhaps twenty families and twenty cars were there. In the evening, a strange thing happened. The twenty families became one family. The children were all the who were the children of all. The loss of home became one loss, and the golden time in the West was one dream. And it might be that a sick child threw despair into the hearts of twenty family, of a, a hundred people, and that a birth there in a tent kept a hundred people quiet and awestruck through the night, and filled a hundred people with birth joy in the morning. A family which the night before had been lost and fearful, might search its goods to find a present for a new baby. In the evening, sitting about the fires, the twenty was one. Or the twenty were one. They grew to be units of the camp, units of the evenings and the nights. A guitar unwrapped from a blanket and tuned, and the songs, which were all of the people, were sung in the nights. Man sang, and men sang the words, and women hummed the tunes. Every night a world created, complete with furniture, friends made, en eh, made and enemies established. A world complete with braggarts and with cowards, with quiet men, with humble men, with kindly men. Every night relationships that make a world established, and every morning the world turned down like a circus. At first the families were timid in the building and tumbling worlds, but gradually the technique of building worlds became their technique. Then leaders emerged. Then laws were made, and then codes came into being, and as the world moved westward, they were more complete and better furnished, for their builders were more experienced in building them. The families learned what rights must be observed, the right of privacy in the tent, the right to keep the past black hidden in the heart, the right to talk and to listen, the right to refuse help or to accept or to offer or to decline it, the right of son to court and daughter to be courted, the rights of hunger to be fed, the rights of the pregnant and the sick to transcend all other rights. And the families learn, although nobody told them, what rights are monstrous and must be destroyed. The rights to intrude upon privacy, right to be noisy while came slept, the right of seduction or rape, the right of adultery and theft and murder. These rights were crushed because the little worlds could not exist for even a night with such rights alive. And as the worlds moved westward, the rules became laws, although nobody, no one told the families. It is unlawful to foul near a camp. It is unlawful in any way to foul the drinking water. It is unlawful to eat good rich food near one who is hungry, unless he is asked to share. And with the laws, the punishments, and there were only two, a quick murderous fight or ostracism. And ostracism was the worst. For if one broke the law, his name and his face went with him, and he had no place in the world, no matter where created. In the world, social conduct became fixed and rigid, and rigid, so that a man must say good morning when asked for it, so that a man might have a willing girl if he stayed with her, if he fathered her children and protected them. But a man might not have one girl one night and another the next, for this world, uh, this would endanger the world. The family has moved westward, and the technique of building world, the worlds improved so that the people knew could be safe in their world, and the form was so fixed that a family acting in the rules knew it was safe in the rules. There grew up government in the wood, worlds, with leaders and with elders. A man who was wise found that his wisdom was needed in every camp. A man who was a fool could not change his folly with the world, with his world and a kind of insurance developed in these nights. Uh, a man with food fed a hungry man, thus insured himself against hunger. And when a baby died, a pile of silver coins grew at the door flat, for a baby must be well buried, since it has nothing else of life. 
An old man may be left in a potter's field, but not a baby. A certain physical pattern is needed for the building of a world. Water, a river bank, a stream, a spring, or even a faucet unguarded. And there is needed enough flat land to pitch the tents, a little brush or wood to build fires. If there is a garbage dump not too far off, all the better, for there can be found equipment, stovetops, a curved fender to shelter the fire, cans to cook in and to eat from. And the walls were built in the evening. The people moving in from the highways made them with their tents and their hearts and their brains. In the morning, the tents came down with the canvas folded, the tent poles tied along the running board, the beds put in place on the cars, the pots in their places. In their places. And as the family moved westward, the families moved westward, the technique of building up a home in the evening and tearing it down with the morning light became fixed so that the folded tent was packed in one place, the cooking pots counted in their box. And as the cars moved westward, each member of the family grew into his proper place, into the, his duty, so that each member, old and young, had his place in the car, so that in the very hot evenings, when the cars pulled into the camping place, each member had his duty and went to it without instruction. Children to gather wood, to carry water, men to pitch the tents and bring down the beds, women to cook the supper and to watch while the family fed. And this was done without command. The families, which had been units of which the boundaries were a house at night and farm by day, changed their boundaries. In the long hot light, they were silent in the cars moving slowly westward. But at night, they integrated with any group they found. Thus, they changed their social life changed as in the whole universe only man can change. They were not farm men anymore, but migrant men, and the thought, the planning, the long staring silence that had gone out to the fields went now to the roads, to the distance, to the west. That man whose mind had been bound with acres lived with narrow concrete miles, and his thought and worry were not anymore with rainfall, with wind and dust, with the thrust of crops. Eyes watched the tires, ears listened to the clattering motors, and minds struggled with oil, with gasoline, with a thinning rubber between air and road. Then a broken gear was a tragedy. Then water in the evening was the yearning, and the food over the fire. Then health to go on was the need and strength to go on, and spirit to go on. The wills thrust westward ahead of them and fears that had once apprehended drought or flood now lingered with anything that might stop the westward crawling. The camps became fixed, each day, each a short day's journey from the last. And on the road, the panic overcame some of the families, so that they drove night and day, and stopped to sleep in the cars, and drove on to the west, flying from the road, flying from movement. And these lusted so greatly to be settled that they set their faces into the west and drove toward it, forcing the clashing engines over the road. But most of the families changed and grew quickly into the new life. And when the sun went down, time to look out for a place to stop. And there's some tents ahead. The car pulled off the road and stopped. And because the others were there first, certain courtesies, courtesies were necessary. And the man, leader of the family, leaned from his car. Can we pull up uh, here and sleep? Why, sure, be proud to have you. What state are you from? Come all the way from Arkansas. There's Arkansas people down in that first, fourth tent. That's so. And the great question, how's the water? Well, she don't chase, taste so good, but there's plenty. Well, thank you. No thanks to me, but the courtesies had to be. The car lumbered over the, the ground uh, to the end tent and stopped. Then down from the car, the wary people climbed and stretched stiff bodies. Then the new tents rang up. The children went for water and the older boys cut brush or wood. The fire started and the supper was put on to boil or to fry. Early comers moved over and the states were exchanged and friends and sometimes relatives discovered. Oklahoma, huh? What county? Cherokee. Why, well, I got folks there. Know the Allens? They's Allens over all over Cherokee. Know the Wilsies? Why, sure. And a new unit was formed. The dusk came, before, but before the dark was down, 
The new family was of the camp. A word had been passed with every family. They were known people, good people. I know the Allens all my life. Simon Allen, old Simon, had trouble with his first wife. She was part Cherokee, pretty as, as a black colt. Sure, and young Simon, he married a Rudolph, didn't he? That's what I thought. They went to live in Enid and done well, real well. Only an Allen that ever done well. Got a garage. When the water was carried and the wood cut, the children walked shyly, cautiously, among the tents. They made elaborate acquaintance, acquaintanceship gestures. A boy stopped near another boy and studied a stone, picked it up, examined it closely, spat on it, and rubbed it clean, and inspected it until he forced the other to demand, What you got there? And casually, nothing, just a rock. Well, what you looking at it like that for? Thought I seen some gold in it. How'd you know? Gold ain't gold. It's black and a rock. Sure, everybody knows that. I bet it's fool's gold, and you figured it was gold. That ain't so, cause Pa, he found lots of gold, and he told me how it looked. How'd you like to pick up a big old piece of gold? Say, I'd get the biggies, old son of a bitchin' piece of candy you ever seen. I ain't gonna let to swear, but I do anyways. Me too. Let's go to the spring. And the young girls found each other and boasted shyly of their popularity and their prospects. The woman worked over the fire, hurrying to get food to the stomachs of the families. Pork if there was money in plenty, pork and potatoes and onions, Dutch oven, biscuits or cornbread, and plenty of gravy to go over it, side meat or chops, and a can of boiled tea, black and bitter, fried dough and drippings if money was slim, Fri uh, dough fried crisp and brown, and the drippings poured over it. Those families were, which were very rich or very foolish with their money ate canned beans and canned peaches and packaged bread and bakery cake, but they ate secretly in their tents, for it would not have been good in, to eat such fine things openly. Even so, children eating their fried dough smelled the warm beans and were unhappy about it. When supper was over and the dishes dipped and wiped, the dark had come, and the men squatted down to talk. And they talked of the land behind them. I don't know what's it's coming to, they said. The country's spoilt. Well, it'll come back, though. We only won't be there. Maybe, they thought. Maybe we sinned some way we didn't know about. Fella says to me, government fella. And he says, she gullied up on ya, government fella. He says, if you plowed across the contour, she won't gully. Never did have no chance to try her. And the new super, eh, uh, ain't plowing across the contour. Running a furrow four miles long that ain't stopping or going around Jesus Christ himself. And they spoke softly of their homes. There was the little cool house under the windmill. Used to keep eh, used to keep milk in there to cream up and watermelons. Go in there midday when she was hotter and hyper, and she'd just be as cool, as cool as you'd want. Cut open a melon in there and she'd hurt your mouth. She was so cool. Water dripping down from the tank. They spoke of their tragedies, had a brother Charlie, hair as yellow as corn, and him and a, a grown man, played the cordine nice. He was harrowing one day, and he went up to clear his lines. Well, a rattlesnake buzzed, and them horses bolted, and the harrow went over Charlie, and the points dug into his guts and his stomach, and they pulled his face off. God Almighty. They spoke of the future, wonder what it's, li uh, it's like out there. Well, the pictures sure do look nice. I seen one when it's hot and fine, and walnut, and trees, and berries, and right behind, close as a mule's ass to his withers, they, there's a tall up mountain, covered with snow. That was a pretty thing to see. If we can get to work, it'll be fine. Won't have no cold in the winter. Kids won't freeze on the way to school. I'm gonna take my, I take care of my kids. Don't miss no, uh, more school. I can read good, but it ain't no pleasure to me, like, with a fella that's used to do it. And perhaps a man brought out his guitar in, to the front of his tent, and he sat on a box to play, and everyone in the camp moved slowly towards him, drawn in toward him. Many men can sing, can chord a guitar, but perhaps this man was a picker. There you have something, the deep chords beating, beating, while the melody runs on the strings like little footsteps. Heavy, hard fingers marched on the frets. The man played, and the people moved slowly in on him, 
until the circle was closed and tight. And then he sang 10, 10 cent cotton and 40 cent meat. And the circle sang softly with him. And he sang, why do you cut your hair, girls? And the circle sang. He wailed the song, I'm leaving old Texas. And that, that eerie song that was sung before the Spaniards came. Only the words were Indian then. And now the group was welded to one thing, one unit, so that in the dark the eyes of the people were inward, and their minds played in other times, and their sadness was like rest, like sleep. He sang the McAllister blues, and then, to make up for it, to the older people, he sang Jesus calls me to his side. The children drowsed with the music, and they went and went into the tents to sleep, and the singing came into their dreams. After a while, the man with the guitar stood up and yawned. Good night, folks, he said, and they murmured, good night to you. And each wished he could pick a guitar because it's a gracious thing. Then the people went to their beds, and the camp was quiet, and the owls coasted overhead, and the coyotes gabbled in the distance. And into the camp, the skunks walked, looking for bits of food, waddling, arrogant skunks, afraid of nothing. The night passed. And with the first streak of dawn, the woman came out of their tents, built up the fires, and put the coffee to boil. And the men came out and talked softly in the dawn. When you cross the Colorado River, there's the desert, they say. Look out, look out for the desert. See, you don't get hung up. Take plenty of water in case you get hung up. I'm going to take her at night. Me too. She'll cut the living Jesus out of you. The families ate quickly, and the dishes were dipped and wiped. The tents came down. There was a rush to go, and when the sun arose, the camping place was vacant, only a little litter left by the people. And the camping place was ready for a new world and a new night. But along the highway, the cars of the migrant people crawled out like bugs, and the narrow concrete miles stretched ahead.